Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Hyperion progression series. I believe now we are on part 12 and today we got kind of a lot of things to go through. I feel like we're at a point where the account is going to push towards some pretty important milestones. The first one being, I think I'm being pretty close to being able to do easy lucid. On the previous part, I managed to clear normal slime pretty easily. Uh, it took about 15 minutes and I think given that amount of damage that I did, I might be able to actually have the damage for Lucid. Not exactly sure if it's enough just yet, but again, just going off of how fast I did Guardian Angel Slime, there is a chance I can clear Easy Lucid as of right now. So that's pretty exciting. Um, This, this is definitely something that we're going to work towards. Another thing that's going to happen is that today is weekly reset, so we're going to get a bunch of money. So the first thing is I've noticed my weekly reset goes along with Maple Tour, so I get 300 mil from Maple Tour. Then I also have all the weekly bosses I need to clear, which will give us about 1.6 bill. So that'll put us today at about 2.5 bill, and that's going to be a lot of money to do upgrades on our gear. Alongside that, I wanted to talk about my pendant that I didn't really upgrade last time. What I decided to do is that as much as I would like to go the reinforced set, uh, I've been convinced by a lot of my friends that it's probably better to just go straight for superior. The superior set is just too strong to pass up, and even though it is more expensive and we don't get immediate set bonuses, being able to work towards pretty much endgame gear is probably the right play. So what I'm going to do is, to start off this video, I'm going to buy a superior pendant, so then we can replace this mechanator. The superior pendant barely loses out and it has a very high stats. It has 5 attack and 28 all stat. It can be star forced above 15, which the mechanator couldn't be. So all in all, it's just a huge, huge upgrade for the character. So here's to us buying our first superior item. Now with this as well, I'll be making this first one into Meso Gear. With the first superior pendant, I'm probably just going to make it into Meso Gear, which is completely fine because I think I'm not in a spot where the little bit of extra stat is going to make much of a difference. That being said though, if I do manage to hit a really nice uh, damage stat line, then I'll probably end up keeping it. But for now though, I'm pretty happy just making it into Meso Gear, and we'll be using that as Meso Gear until we can buy another one to make into proper damage gear. Another thing that I've done uh, over the last couple of days is actually work on my Legion. I decided to put my Evan through the food storehouse. So currently it is level 193. And I believe if I put him through the storehouse one more time, he should be able to get to level 199. And then I'll be able to use Scrap to get him to level 200. And I'll probably end up leaving him at level 200 until I have enough resources to push him to 210. I decided to do this on the Evan because the level 3 link skill, the rune duration link skill, is quite strong for training mules. So later on when I decide to push some of my other characters to level 200 or 150 or wherever it goes, I'll be able to get quite a lot of extra EXP from it. Speaking of EXP as well, I did start making an Iran. So this is my next character I'm going to be working towards getting level 120 on. Again, this is just to boost the leveling process of my mules. That way it'll be much easier to go through and level up the early link characters that I need. And I still need quite a lot. I'm missing two mages and I'm missing four thieves at the minimum. And then I have to go back and do a bunch of Legion characters, including the Resistance characters. They give a lot of very good bonuses in the Legion grid. And all in all, we're just kind of working towards making our Legion grid much easier to improve, and more EXP links are always welcome. So enough about the Legion. The next thing I wanted to talk about is my Threads of Fate. Today is a new day, and I wanted to show you guys how to maintain the chop wood. So a lot of people mentioned something about how do I keep the chop wood. So I, yesterday, I unlocked the Ask, and the Ask gave me the option to get the Mysterious Herb Pouches. So I have 50 of them in my inventory. Uh, I did all five of the Asks, so basically just AFK. By the way, um, we do have an AFK event. This Abyssal Expedition event is basically AFK, so it kind of worked hand in hand with our threads. But I do need to make sure I can lock in the chop wood. To do that, I need a second character that I can ask. So for Tengu, he's currently 45 closeness, so I need to go and do the Shoah boss one more time. And the Shoah boss will drop us one more piece of yarn that we can use to push him to 50. So I'm going to quickly go do that. And with the Threads of Fate yarn ball, we can put this onto Tengu. And then Tengu should be above 50 now. And now we can ask him, and he will be the first ask that I've done since reset. I, he just coincidentally happened to be chop wood. That is... <laughs> well, as an example, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it. But what you're meant to do now is that you can relog, and any of the other existing asks that you have will be the same. It will get locked for the rest of the day. It's kind of crazy that my Tengu also got chop wood. That is kind of wild. 
But I think the best part now is that when you finish an ask, you get a bit more closeness every day. So you get five closeness from just asking them. And I think that I'm actually significantly happier with Tengu having the chop wood. <laughs> Because then I can get him to 70, and once he's at 70, we can get a nice damage boost from his summon that we can use once a day. Wow, that is that is crazy. I got two chop woods on two different characters. That's <laughs> You can't make that up. That's actually crazy. Anyway, that's enough uh, messing around with uh, some of these threads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go try do all of my weeklies. I want to start off with slime and then work my way down. I want to start off with slime because I do want to pop a Legion Luck coupon to see if we can get any rings. And then after that, I'll go do Arcarium and Golix and see if we get anything. And just work our way through down the weekly bosses. And then once we're done that, we're going to use the money to try to improve our gear. Hopefully we get some luck and get some of our equips to a nice stat. We want to get this earring to Legendary and then make it into Meso or Drop Gear. And then we want to improve our Superior Golix Pendant as well to do the same thing. And if we have any money left over, I wouldn't mind improving some of our existing gear. We do have... A secondary that is chilling at epic. We do have our weapon that we just got on the previous part. I wouldn't mind getting that to legendary as well. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'll finish up my weeklies and we'll see how we go. So that is all of our weeklies done. Let's have a sell of the crystals and see what we get. We got 1.6 bill like we expected. And now that puts us at 2.5 bill, which is a pretty significant amount of money. I actually got a lot from just doing Ursus this week. Uh, sometimes I don't make the Ursus timing, but this week I managed to catch it here and there, which added a lot to the income for this week. And now we can move on to something a little bit more fun, which is the upgrading part of today's video. So the main thing we wanted to do is to get this Horntail Earring to Legendary, that's the first thing, and then we're going to work on getting our Superior Golix Pendant to also Legendary. That way we can have both of them be drop gear, uh, but I'm having a slight issue with some of my various spots, so let me clear it out first. Let's start off with them. Um, these flames. These flames can go straight onto the Absalab weapon. So we're just looking for magic attack here, and if we're lucky, we'll get some combination of boss damage. But like I said in previous parts, uh, it's not that big of a priority, so I'm not too fussed that we didn't get anything. The next thing we need to do is actually get this pendant a potential line. And what I like to do when I don't have access to epic potential scrolls, because I actually used all the ones from the event shop, I don't like using my legion coins. Uh, legion coins are very valuable, so I didn't want to use it on anything that wasn't the coupons. But what I like to do is, I have some spare hard cubes that we got from our bosses today. And I'm going to chuck them on the superior pendant and see if it tears up. We have 10 tries, which isn't too bad. No tear up from here. Now what I can do is, let me just check my storage. Do I have any? I have a few here and there. Let's grab some of these cubes. So we have one more hard cube that we can put onto the pendant. No tear up. And this is where I consider using these solid cubes. 
solid cubes are basically like red cubes, or I suppose now they're called glowing cubes, so they let you reroll it legendary. I could use that to try to tear it up. I think I'm going to prioritize getting the earring to legendary first and then rolling for a relevant line. So let's do that first. Let's grab some cubes from the shop. Uh, I want to buy 50 of them. Hopefully we'll be able to get the earrings to legendary. Last week it was a bit of a struggle. Hopefully it doesn't take too many more cubes to get that tier up. Okay, looking a little bit rough here. We used 50 and didn't get the tier up. Hopefully in the next 50 we'll be able to get it. The variance of uh, tearing up to legendary is quite rough sometimes, so... We're just basically just praying that uh, it goes up. This uh, earring has been pretty stubborn for us. We'll see if we can get it from this one. There we go. I was getting a little bit nervous there, I'm not gonna lie. That was a lot of cubes. I think it was 50 from this session and quite a lot from the previous one, but we got there in the end and that's what matters. And it even came with item drop, which is perfect for us. And now we can spend the rest of it. I have two options. I could go for the weapon or I could go for the, the pendant, but I think I'm going to lean towards the pendant. It does feel kind of bad to use these uh, bright cubes, but uh, we got it on the first try, so I guess that evens out. So let's see if we have these uh, 39, we can get it to legendary. Legendary would be ideal, like always, but it can be pretty expensive. At least we got one of the pieces done. Can't complain too much about that. Okay, we got the unique tier up. 27 cubes left. Let's see if we can get it. Ah, oh, wow. We actually got it. Oh, and we got Meso Plus Int. Wow, okay. So it completely balanced out the little bit of bad luck that we got on our earring. So that's pretty good. We managed to get two items to Legendary in one sitting. And all we need to do now is kind of Star Force this up. I'm not in a rush to Star Force the Pendant just yet, so I might leave it actually at this uh, zero flame score. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the rest of these cubes. I have two options. One is to work on this shield that's currently at Epic, or I can put it onto my Abso weapon. And given the fact that it is kind of hard to tear up and this staff isn't even 17 star, I'm going to put the cubes onto my shield to see if I can get it to Unique. And then once it gets to Unique, if it gets to Unique, Hopefully we can try to have some tries at going to Legendary. If not, then I'm pretty happy with Unique. I do have some spare hard cubes I can throw onto it for some fun rolls. We got it to Unique. 12 cubes left. See if we can get it one last tier up. Alright, no tier up. We have a little bit of money left. I'm kind of happy to spend it on these bright cubes. We'll try another 10. See if that gets us anything. I don't mind putting this extra money into our secondary. Oh, we actually got the tear up. Okay, now we're talking. We are definitely bouncing out from the earrings bad luck over the last two sessions. Wow, okay, that is pretty awesome. Now we actually have a usable shield at legendary. And now we have something we can use these solid cubes on, which feels pretty good. I'm pretty happy settling on two lines of magic attack in this case. Uh, and the best case scenario will be some combination of three useful lines between IED, attack, and boss. It is a secondary though, so I don't think that the chances of it hitting three useful lines is super high. Get IED and magic attack. I'm not too fond of the IED line at the moment. I kind of want attack, so I'm going to use these cubes to see if I can roll for something a bit better. Let's see if we can get two lines of magic attack. got 35 boss and 9 attack. I think ideally I would like one of the lines to be 12 magic attack at least. That way we can still train relatively easily. The boss damage lines don't do very much for our training. With only 3 cubes left, I think I'm just going to keep this potential. I've got 12 magic attack and 40 IED. 9% crit rate. It's not super useful, it's basically just 12 magic attack. Once I have some more money, I think I'm okay trying to roll for something a little bit better, but for now though, I think this is fine. 
I have eight cubes left. I think I'm okay throwing them onto my weapon. Whoa! It's hit up to legendary. <laughs> okay, now we're just up amazing. That feels so good. Wow, okay. That was so cheap then. Today's cubing session went immensely well. It started off kind of terrible, but it, it ended up being amazing. Okay. Now we can use these three cubes. Uh, I'm going to throw them on the weapon, see if we get something. Pretty much anything useful with magic attack, it's going to be better than our current one. Because it's just damage. Damage is a very weak line. This staff is basically the equivalent of about 45% boss damage on the potential. So any combination of boss damage and attack will be a significant increase. Wow, okay, we're in a pretty good spot now. I guess all I need to do left is just use the rest of these bright cubes. Um, I guess we can start working on our Absolab gear. I do kind of want to slowly roulette these things to unique. They're all kind of nice though, they're all at 7 and 4, except the gloves, so I guess I'll just throw the rest of these on the glove. Let's see what happens. And that's all the cubes done. Wow, okay, that is a lot of really good gains, actually. It started off kind of rough, ended up amazing. I don't know how many times I said that, but it feels so damn good right now. We managed to get two pieces of drop gear done. The superior Golix one came with stat. The earring just came out as just item drop, so this is perfect. Now we have five lines of meso. We have two lines on this ring, two lines on this black bean mark, and one line of meso on the pendant. And then the rest of the equipment has one line of drop rate. So this is probably the optimal setup for the early game for us. And now we can happily spend a lot of time just smacking mobs and we'll make a lot of money as well. We want to try to combine it with the mysterious herb pouches because we can use those and hopefully open up some juniper berry seed oils and we'll use those to make wealth acquisition potions, which I believe I have some recipes for. I have four recipes for them. And then we can combine that with the wealth coupons that we get from our Legion shop, which is why I didn't want to buy this potential scroll. We have these wealth coupons that give us a lot of meso as well. So this will give us like some pretty good income from just training and we'll work towards our level goals slowly as well. Not to mention we managed to hit legendary on this spare weapon that we're going to be working on in the background. This is going to be a pretty big gain. And also our shield gain to legendary is nice as well, sets it up nicely for us. So the next week is going to be some really, really big gains. I finished up getting my Evan to level 200. Uh, as you guys saw, I got it through the Identus food storehouse. Now that character is just kind of waiting for some potions to go through to 210. As of right now, I haven't decided if I wanted to use the EXP coupons or not because I believe in the event that's going on right now, uh, this Abyssal Expedition event, they do give us some level up potions I might use on the Evan to save myself some coupons, but I'm pretty sure I have enough to get it there anyway. I currently don't have enough anyway for the EXP coupons to get it to level 210. I believe you need about 4,000 and I only have 2,000 at the moment. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at level 200. And hopefully by the time I start working on my Angelic Buster, it will be level 210 so that my AB can level up pretty quick. Now, in terms of the storehouse, I probably will start putting my Mercedes through it. For the same reason, I kind of just want to get my EXP links out of the way. That way, when I start working on more link characters, it will just get faster and faster. And these two links are very powerful for leveling up as well. Speaking of leveling up, I just hit level 257, so I need to go through and do my Limina prequest. That way I have access to the final maps. And Limina has a lot of really, really good training maps. There's so many of them that are very easy to farm, and I'm looking forward to being able to just kind of sit around and pick up money off the floor, I'll be honest. Now, I did a little bit of meso farming. Um, I got about 200 mil from about half an hour and some number of familiar cards. Uh, I didn't really pay attention, but it looks like I got maybe like a hundred familiar cards in the half an hour. It's not too bad, but that's also because I'm not strong enough to one shot even in Moonbridge just yet. Uh, hopefully when I go to Illumina, my main goal is to try to get my equipment to be a little bit better so then I have a better time training. The first one will probably be the weapon. Uh, the weapon is a pretty big source of damage and the fact that I don't have that many attack lines right now between my shield and my weapon 
means that it's kind of hard to train. It's just something that I have to keep in mind for the next set of weekly bosses that I do. I'm going to go off and do my Limina prequest and uh, unlock the new maps. Now that I have Limina unlocked, I have access to all these maps that I can train on. A lot of them have pretty good mob spawn and they're pretty easy to loot as well. So I do plan on spending a lot of time here, especially because all these mobs drop familiar cards, which I do plan on farming. And it's a slow and steady process. I think that for me, I'm no longer really rushing to level up. It wouldn't hurt to hit level 260 to unlock my sixth job. But uh, right now I'm mostly focused on trying to get these fams. They, I feel like they are the best value for time for me at the moment, even though they are kind of RNG locked. Uh, I feel like a lot of my progress is going to be locked behind not having enough money and also these fam cards, because the links and Legion will just slowly build up anyway. So I'll probably end up just spending a lot of time training in these maps. Alongside that, I do have a lot of herb pouches. I've been trying to do my asks as frequently as possible. So I've just been doing Tengu as often as I can. We're getting close to 70, which is pretty good. Uh, once we hit 70, we get the summon, which will give us access to a nice buff. Speaking of a buff, today I did Golux and I got my first superior drop. Unfortunately, I didn't get this on camera, but the best part of it is uh, we do own one now. And this is going to be our belt that we're going to be using for quite a while. Uh, I'm going to try to get this to 17 star once we get a star forcing event. I believe in a few weeks we'll be able to have a 5, 10, 15. So getting this to 17 will be a priority alongside getting our shoes to 17 as well and i guess also our pendant which also has nothing on it so i'm going to swap over onto this superior golex belt uh, it will give us our two set which gives us 20 stat and if we just look at the base stats just with nothing on it it is so strong it's got 60 of each stat and 35 attack compared to the pink bean belt it's way way better it's it's actually crazy how broken the superior golix belt is i'm going to use this epic potential scroll i got from the daily and let's see if we can reveal it at int nope that's fine we have some stamps to three line it and i have some hard cubes let's see if we can get anything nope but that's okay I can use these mystical cubes to get something useful, I suppose. Okay, 3% int, that'll be good enough for the time being. And there we go, we now have our two sets superior. All we need now is to get the drop, we just need the earring drop, and then we need to farm back the coins. We need another 700 coins to get a superior ring, and that'll finish up our full set. And that is our pretty much our main goal for Golic, so hopefully we'll get an earring drop before we hit 700. That way, when we do hit the 700 coins, we can straight away buy the ring. Otherwise, we're going to end up having to save another 700 and then buy the earring, which is the least convenient option. But again, it is RNG gated, so there's not much we can do there. As for now, though, I'm just going to probably wrap up the video here. Um, I'm going to be focusing on my Legion in the downtime. I do have some food storehouse usages left. Uh, I haven't got around to doing it on the Mercedes just yet, but I will probably put it on the Mercedes. And I'll be working on more Mage Links. I just finished up my Bishop is at 120 now. Uh, I'll need to make a Ice Lightning and a Fire Poison also to 120. And then after that, I'll be moving on to my Thief Links, where I will also have to make one of each Thief, and I'll have to make three of them. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video so far and continue to support me on this progression. We're getting pretty far into it now. Now we're just kind of getting towards the slog though. We're going to end up training a lot and spending a lot of time just farming meso and farming familiar cards. Hopefully with a bit of luck, they will amount to something useful. Again, familiars are a pretty punishing system. They are very volatile <laughs> whether or not you get anything good. So we'll just see how that goes. Thanks again for watching. Take care and... I'll see you guys in the next one.